I've been running a personal training business for about seven to eight years now. For the first few years, I trained clients in their own homes. For the last five to six years, I've been running a private personal training studio where I work alongside my wife and employ other trainers as well. I try to keep most of the content on this channel positive, but today we're going to be doing the exact opposite. We'll be focusing on the worst aspects of running a training business. I'll release a separate video on the best parts of running a training business soon, that way you get both sides. Anyways, if you're planning on running a training business, Business, you're going to want to stick around for everything I'm about to say because you will end up dealing with what I'm about to mention whether you want to or not. Before we start breaking down the worst parts of running a training business, all I ask is that you consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. That is the best way to support this channel and this channel is a free resource for all fitness professionals. Thank you for that support everyone, I really appreciate it. So many of the things that we talk about today won't be unique to running a training business. Self-employed trainers as well as trainers who work for other people will both have to end up dealing with a lot of this stuff. That said, these negative things are almost always worse when you're self-employed and running your own business. Basically, the best aspects of training become enhanced when you're running your own business, but the bad parts of it also intensify too. All of my worst parts of running a training business are in no particular order today. The first bad thing about running a training business is the hours. To be honest, the hours are already pretty rough when you're just a regular full-time trainer. Usually, you're going to be working some variation of a split shift. A split shift in our case is when you're working before and after working hours. So you might be in the facility from 5 a.m. to 11 a.m., then you'll take a break for a few hours, and then you'll go back to the facility and work from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Days like this are not only common, but they're expected if you're trying to maximize your income as a trainer. When you're running a training business, at least for part of your career, plan on doing a few split shifts like that every week. As you grow your business, you may eventually find yourself in a situation where you can move away from split shifts a little bit. Maybe you've grown a big enough following to where you can afford to just work the mornings. It's certainly possible to get to that point, but you'd still be leaving money on the table, which may or may not be an okay thing, depending on your situation. It's also common to work at least one weekend day too, by the way. On top of that already draining work schedule, when you run your own training business, you're responsible for a lot of other things too. You have to market, network, pay taxes, handle other expenses, and deal with every client and problem that comes your way. Basically some kind of problem will happen pretty much every day and you'll have to figure out a solution because you're the boss. I think people drastically underestimate how much time and effort goes into all of that, but trust me, it's a lot. If you know small business owners, you may have heard something like this before. But when you run a business, you're never off the clock. You're always on no matter what. It really is mentally and physically draining. Some people thrive in that sort of environment and others can't handle it. The simpler your business, the easier it is. But still, this lifestyle isn't for everyone. In fact, I would say it's not right for most people. The next worst part of running a training business is the hard initial start. The initial start being challenging applies to self-employed trainers and trainers working in a more typical fitness setting as well. Just like with the hour situation though, trainers working for themselves have a tougher start ahead of them. Acquiring clients in most typical gym settings is like playing a video game on medium mode. It's usually somewhat challenging, but there are clear things that you can do to improve your odds of signing people up for your services. You always have access to a number of people who are using the facility. Some of these people will want personal training and some won't. That being said, pretty much everyone working out in the gym is a potential lead in one form or another. Even people who aren't interested in your services could still refer people to you if you play your cards right. When you go off on your own, you usually lose most or all of your ability to acquire clients or leads from the gym floor. You won't have anyone feeding you those free initial training sessions or assessments when someone first signs up for a membership. When you're on your own, it's all on you. Things definitely move to hard mode when you're working for yourself. Now, if you're really good at what you do and you're willing to tough those challenges initial months out, usually you'll be able to make things work. I don't put nearly as much time, effort, or money into acquiring clients these days. I'm more focused on other things. So I'm well past that hard initial start, and you could be too if you attack things the right way. Speaking of doing things the right way, I've got a whole bunch of videos that cover starting a training business, acquiring clients, etc. If that's what you want to do, this video on starting a training business is a great place to start. Another one of the worst parts of running a training business is being a manager. Most customers are great to work with and you'll never have any issues. One out of 10 though, give or take, will be an absolute pain in your ass. 
A lot of the time this is already hard to deal with as a regular trainer. When you're self-employed though, as you'd expect, things get harder. When it comes to things like billing, cancellation policies, hours of operation, days off, and most other things, if you work for someone else, the facility that you're operating out of has some say over the rules. Even though these rules can sometimes be problematic, when something goes wrong, there's usually someone who can help you out or give you guidance on what the best thing to do is. When you're on your own, you need to figure that stuff out for yourself. Not only that, but when a customer has a complaint for the manager, well, that's you too. Many trainers who go off on their own are pretty good at working with clients and have already proven themselves in a traditional gym setting. You know what they're not good at oftentimes? All of those little mundane things that I just mentioned, like billing clients and dealing with taxes. That stuff isn't sexy or cool at all, but it's incredibly important to be solid there. Many of those same trainers who are good at training clients also aren't great at dealing with angry customers. So just be aware that all of these things are a bigger part of the job if you choose to go off on your own. You can't just focus on training at that point. Another one of the worst things about running a training business is the lack of time off and benefits. Benefits, aka health insurance, and other related things are something that you're going to need to pay for in the US and some other countries too. This is one of the biggest downsides to being self-employed because health insurance is expensive. I pay about $700 a month for myself and my wife to have very basic coverage. This makes it one of our highest monthly expenses. Also keep in mind we have very basic coverage. We don't have a plan that covers everything like vision for instance. Taking time off is also incredibly hard too. We have about 50 or so clients who come into my studio on a pretty regular basis and all of those clients are at different points in their journeys. Many of them have been clients for years and then also a lot of them are just getting started. Pretty much all of my long-term clients know that my staff and my self are hard workers. They know that we're reliable, we don't miss appointments unless there's a very rare emergency, and that we're going to be there to help them accomplish their goals, whatever they are. I certainly don't feel the need as much to prove myself to those longer term clients. I do feel a constant need to prove myself to newer clients. They need to know that I'm committed to their process. This always makes it really hard to travel or to take time off. If your trip falls at the wrong time, it could be the thing that causes your client to not resign with you. It sounds crazy, but stuff like that happens. People have goals and deadlines, and they're all in different places. If you hire other trainers to work for you, you can at least partially remedy this situation, but hiring others causes all sorts of other problems, which we'll discuss soon. Another thing that sucks about running a training business is the money. Now let me explain here, because you can actually make a decent amount of money running a training business. The reason I say the money is one of the worst parts of running a training business is because relative to the effort being put in, the money isn't that great. You constantly need to hustle and grind, even if you're someone like me that's been near the top of the game for a while. I make around $100,000 a year, which puts me in the top tier of trainers income-wise if we're going to believe some of the stats available online. For comparison, I know many people who work in IT, and with minimal schooling or education, you make close to that starting out and possibly more than that after some time in the field. No offense to those guys or girls in IT, but they don't work as hard as I do. They're not putting in the same kind of hours or taking the same kind of risks that I am. That's not unique to IT either, by the way. There's lots of jobs out there that pay as much or more than training, but are way easier to get established in and way lower risk at the same time. Now, if you run your own business like I do, you can employ other trainers, give them work, and take a cut of what they do since you're supplying them with a facility and a bunch of other things too. Of course, this gives you as a training business owner the opportunity to make more money. It's harder to make extra cash this way than you'd think though. You'd probably have to pay the trainer doing the work about half of that session fee. Of course, this depends on their experience and their skill level, so that number could vary a bit. Then you'd probably be losing another $20 for the cost of overhead. You have to pay rent on the facility, utilities, equipment cost, maintenance, oftentimes you're paying for scheduling software, and taxes are pretty brutal too. That leaves you with around $10 if you're lucky. Now, of course, you could charge more for training, and that would make those numbers look a little bit more favorable but you get the idea. Even if you run a facility doing a lot of training, it's going to be tough to make a ton of money. There are much easier ways out there to get rich. I have a bonus thing that sucks about running a training business, and this is a bonus thing because it won't apply to most of you, but building upon everything I just said, working with employees does kind of suck when running a training business. Now, unfortunately, I'm sure to offend some of you with what I'm about to say, 
but I am going to say it anyways. The biggest reason why running a training business and employing other trainers sucks is because many, possibly most trainers, aren't all that serious about the job. This probably won't apply to many of you watching right now because here you are at the end of a trainer education video. But yeah, I'd say based on my experience, more than half of trainers are hobbyists. They get into training because they like working out and it's easy to get into the field. They're not thinking that much about what they're actually going to be doing while they're working as a trainer, which is sales and client interaction, especially in the beginning. They're not thinking about how crazy the hours are going to be or how hard those first few months are going to be. At least many trainers aren't thinking much about those things until they're already in the field. Then after dealing with all of that for a few months, they're like, this is hard and not what I thought. The reality of the job being different compared to what many expect causes a lot of trainers to quit in that first year. As a manager, this is hard because it's tough to tell when you're hiring if someone is going to have the tenacity to survive that tough start. I've seen many trainers with tons of potential fall flat on their faces early on and then never recover. I've also seen trainers who were pretty shaky in the beginning go on to become all-stars. So you really never know how someone is going to do. Anyway, long story short, there's a high amount of turnover in the training industry for all the previously mentioned reasons. And that is something that sucks about running a training business if you plan on hiring employees. What do all of you guys think though? In your opinion, what's the worst part of running a training business? Make sure to let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Like I said before, I'll release a video on the best parts of running a training business soon, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already because both of those things do help the channel to grow and that does allow me to create more free content for all of you. Thanks for watching everyone and until next time, stay sort of healthy.